and welcome to the Greenfield Community College Rock Garden. One thing I want to direct your attention to first is this handy dandy little guide that the Four Rivers Charter School, which happens to be an expeditionary learning school here in Greenfield, Massachusetts, produced. It's a guide to the rock garden. Now this rock garden was organized by geology uh, professor Richard Little and other geology uh, researchers uh, here at Greenfield Community College and in the region. And the reason we are bringing you here is not just because we think rocks are cool and we want you to look at a whole bunch of rocks, but these rocks represent the geologic history of this region of Massachusetts. This rock garden is organized into several sections. You are currently looking at the North Garden, which contains sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks from the Connecticut River Valley and the area around it. Right here in front of me is some really nice samples of mudstone and sandstone with really cool features in them. So here we have mud cracks, 200 million year old mud cracks have been, then, that have been petrified. There's some more in the stone. And here and here we have ripple marks that have been preserved in the stone. And in this one right here, this purpley red one, there are actually worm burrows and worm trails in the rocks that are preserved. Now, if you'll walk with me this way, we come to a coarser grained, older rock. This is some of the Arco sandstone. Uh, and actually, one of the things that's interesting about this particular bunch of rocks is it contains a very rare formation which is called a mud ball. A mud ball is not something that dinosaurs picked up and threw at each other, but it's actually a piece of mud that got eroded and dropped into the river at some point about 200 million years, give or take five or ten million years ago, and then it rolled around in the rocks on the riverbed until it was completely covered with rocks and then got buried. And because it was completely covered with rocks, it had an armor around it that prevented that mud ball from being eroded away. And so in some of these rocks here, you will see, if you look closely, you might come around here, Mr. Wheat, and you'll see an example of a mud ball preserved in the rock right here. And then there's some others floating around in other rocks as well. Now, if we walk through, here are some raindrops preserved in, uh, in a rock, it appears. And then further on, we start getting into some metamorphic rocks. Uh, these are fairly deep metamorphic rocks. It looks like there's fossils in it, but this one actually has crystals, which are called starlight crystals. When we go to the Amherst Museum, look at the floor there, and you'll see very similar crystals in the rocks there. They've chosen the rocks for the Amherst Museum very carefully because they contain very interesting metamorphic features like that. When the rock is under a certain amount of pressure and a certain amount of heat, it forms different crystals, and we can use the kinds of crystals that are formed in rocks as a kind of thermometer to figure out the temperature the rock is under, and also a kind of rock barometer to figure out how much pressure the rock is under. And so we've been able to classify this, and we can actually use this type of rock. If it has star-like crystals, it was a certain depth. If it has garnet crystals, it was another certain depth, and temperature as well. If we walk over here into the rock garden, we find some marble. And Mr. Reed, if you'll come over here, you'll get a better view of this. There's some twisted uh, schist over here, plus some marble. The twisted schist is folded by, these metamorphic rocks are folded and pressurized and heated uh, by the earlier processes before the Connecticut Rift Valley. They're caught, created by the pressure of the continents colliding with each other and the pressures of the mountains building up taller than the Himalayas. This rock is particularly spectacular it has garnet crystals as big as my little fingernail in it. So this is a metamorphic rock called schist, and it was under the te proper temperatures for garnet crystals to form 
very large granite crystals, I might add. This is probably a piece of marble that has a soft part that got eroded around it. And then if we come over here, we get into a little area that's kind of obscure in this garden. But this area is interesting because this is from an area just north of here called Bernardston, which has older sedimentary rocks. There are not many sedimentary rocks in the Connecticut Valley area that are older than the 200 million year old sandstone in the uh, shell I mean in the Turner's Falls and Barton Cove area. But these are actually from the Ordovician uh, time period, which is before Pangaea formed, before these volcanic island chains that combine to make Pan this area uh, land formed between them before they collided, I should say. They were already formed, but before they collided, <clears throat> there was ocean floor. And over here, you'll find coral fossils from the seafloor and other kinds of shell creatures that were found around in this area just a little bit north and to the west. And then over here, we have some more of the breccia. If you've gone to Barton Cove already, then you've probably already seen the, brec the sedimentary breccia, this broken up sandstone from an earthquake fault 200 million years ago. Uh, you can also have volcanic breccia, which would be broken up volcanic rock. But breccia simply means broken in Greek, I believe. And we come over here, and we have a collection of rocks that you might recognize from our trip down the Deerfield River on the whitewater rafting trip. These are super hard river stones known as quartzite. These probably came from the same general formation area as the Cambrian Beach Party, which is in the North Adams area. These are from a sandy beach on the east coast of North America at one point, which used to be pretty close to Albany, New York, the western edge of Massachusetts, eastern edge of New York. And this is quartzite. Quartzite is the metamorphic rock that forms when sandstone is heated and pressurized. So this is a 500 million year old piece of a beach. In a second, we're going to resume this little tour in the central garden of the Greenfield Community College Rock Garden. I am sitting on what is probably a very familiar stone to you. This is, this is granite. And granite is, of course, an igneous rock. Now, if you recall from our studies of the rock cycle, granite is an intrusive igneous rock, and it is formed underground in volcanoes in subduction zones, generally speaking. So this granite is probably formed under one of the volcanic island chains that formed Massachusetts. Um, it could be bluish or pinkish, sometimes green or gray or just various uh, whitish colors. We have a whole variety of rocks that are similar to it. This is a particularly interesting type of granite that's called graphic granite. And it sort of looks like there's been writing done on it. Um, and if we follow along over here, this is the central garden of the Greenfield Community Rock Garden, which is devoted primarily to intrusive igneous rocks. Igneous rocks that were formed in magma underground, deep underground. Uh, this one I think is particularly interesting because it is two different rocks in one. Right here you have the older metamorphic rock. You'll see little red garnet crystals in it. So this is a schist and the garnet crystals again can tell us what temperature and what heat uh, this was found in, uh, was formed in. But then magma at some point came through a crack and underground cooled but cooled fairly slowly because this has fairly large crystals. And so it is a larger crystal form of granite, which we call pegmatite. So we call, since it came up through a crack also and made probably underground a wall-like formation, similar to the dikes that they have in the Netherlands, we would call this a pegmatite dike. And then we have, coming around here, you can see larger crystals. Let's uh, pause for a second. 